early. We got another episode of early. Appreciate Real y'all early. tuning in. And we also got another special guest in the house. For we sure got though, Amber man. Rain in here. The one and only. Appreciate you coming through. For Thanks sure. For having for sure. Me. Yeah. Right. What's Thank going you. on? How are you? I'm well. Yeah. I'm quite well. Thank you for asking. How yeah, for sure. Today? Yeah, all right. We cooling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We definitely appreciate you. Can't complain. Definitely set. appreciate you coming through. Uh, being in studio with us. Yes. About to get into a dope conversation. 100%. I feel like you got a lot of shit going on right now. Yeah, you man. know what I'm saying? Visual forward. artist, filmmaker. You got you got so much shit going on right now, uh, working on a lot of projects, but um, definitely want to get into how you got to this point. I'm super curious on people's journeys, how they get to where we find them at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure, so sure. I look forward to like digging into your story, but um, brief intro yeah, yeah, yeah. before anything, just let the people know who you are. Okay, so I'm Amber Rain. Um, as you said, I'm a visual artist and a filmmaker. Um, I also do event production and coordination as well. Um, but overall, I just like to consider myself like an artist um, and an entrepreneur. I have my own media company, Amber Rain Media. Um, and yeah, I, I like doing all things art related. So that's no, my passion. That's dope. Like, so, you know, one thing that, you know, I'm always curious about is how people come to be in the positions that they're at and, you know, that trajectory. For some people, you know, it's linear. It's like, you know, I I, I, I was always meant to do I've this. I've been making films since I was four. Right, right. You know, my parents was in the game. You know, they just put me in the game and I just, I just ran with it. But, you know, sometimes it's unorthodox and we, you know, life takes us on different paths and sometimes we just have that aha moment in our life where we're like, yo, I've kind of already been doing this mm -hmm. i've been doing these tasks but maybe i didn't assume that label i didn't think that these were skills that kind of traveled all i had to do is like all right like if i just pivot and do the same thing i was doing in this arena in this realm over here like i can thrive and that's some shit that i actually am interested in so like where is that how it was for you did you always know that you wanted to you know I'm sure artist is something that you always knew you were, but now how you go about manifesting that art? Like, did you always know you wanted to be in film and shit like that, or not? Nah, did things happen down your, you know, your course that you're like, oh wow, I think this is what I need to be doing? Yeah, no, I never expected to work in film. Um, That's not what I thought you were gonna say. <laughs> no, uh, I just did not. Anything creative Definitely. or like? Uh, so, well, I guess that yeah. I, when I when I was young, a child, I was always into art. I used to draw a lot. Okay. I was a really decent artist at a young age. I had lots of drawings, poems, and things like that. Right. Um, but as I went through school, I always did really, really well in school. Always got really good grades. And when I went to college, I went to Howard, and my intention was okay. to be an attorney and go to law school. That's nice. something so totally nice. different on the other yeah. side of the spectrum, though. This ain't got no Absolutely. art shit with it. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Like, I was... That, that speaks was, to the intelligence, like, the school getting good grades and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I um, got a scholarship there my first year. Tough. I was in... Um, I was a political science major Tough. in poli sci and sociology minor. I wanted to be, like, a civil like rights attorney i wanted to focus on like civil rights yeah. and um women and minority rights Word. things like that but things did not really go as planned and i ended up leaving however after my junior year and it was a really great experience um that was like really my first choice in terms of schools and i met a lot of great people there made a lot of great connections but ultimately i ended up um transferring to Bowie state university um and I changed my major. I ended up going in a fine arts department. So and what? What? Why the change? Was there like a, something that happened, or was it kind of just you realizing like, uh, I don't know if I could see myself doing this That's a good for question. years, like decades moving forward. Like I don't know. Like so. That's what, a good question. Yeah. When I was at Howard and I started in poli sci, like it was it was good, but over the course of it, I really, I had you know a lot of ups and downs in my college experience. Mm -hmm. So. Um, at that point, I went to Bowie. My intention was to continue and just like finish my degree. Cause you was a junior at this point. I right? was a junior. So I already you already done it for like three years. Yeah. But Bowie was a little bit different. Bowie had a much smaller 
government department like howard has its own law school so i think they probably funnel a lot of students yeah for from sure. undergrad that are in political science what? majors and criminal justice major things like that into the law school what? but the department at Bowie was very small they offered a lot less classes and basically you know i had a lot of credits already it should have taken me like no more than a year and a half to like graduate with what? all the credits i had but based on what was available at Bowie. Um, and what was available during like what semesters, it was gonna take like at least two years for me to, for me to finish my degree, and I was just like, like oh, man. and was you ready mentally like, to like ready be to done? Get it over, but I was just like, I'm really <laughs> trying to get two through years. Like I thought I was gonna have one, then no. one and a half. Right. <laughs> like, I don't, two. I don't know if it was gonna work, and right. then. You know, political science, being an attorney requires a lot of reading and writing. Like, yeah. it's very, it's a lot of busy work. It's, right. you know, it's very intense. Right. Me, I'm not really big on homework. Right. Okay, right. like. So, wait, how'd you get good grades in school, in high school? I I was good at taking tests. I have a really good memory yeah, at the time. Memory. Okay. Yeah, that's I mean, I, I did. I, I mean, that's basically what school I is I definitely at that did point. enough. Like, I but did I my work, like, but I was the type of person where, like, I would like get to school a little early and do all my homework in the library before school the next okay. morning instead of doing so it at you home. was um right right, right. that's now, interesting make the most of your time real quick that's, that's, yeah, yeah like, like, trying to spend it's like you know you got to get the work done and you'll get it done whenever you can but you also I'm still not have fun to do that. I'm, like when i go home yeah i went to I'm chill i went to relax right. like i was like in all these high like tag ap classes like right. all yeah, this yeah, shit. yeah yeah like, right. i'm not that's trying to crazy to me because like that's crazy to me though like if you tests, weren't doing it at home and you, you were just you would just make time to do it yeah and like i i yeah i wasn't trying to do that uh when i took my test i would always be like in the at least 90th and up up percentile on every section of every standardized test that i took like what? i was just very advanced that's but crazy. i hated school so much like what? i did not really enjoy grade school i was like i felt like stressed out as a kid like with Did all you? the you felt like pressure to get good grades i definitely or? felt there was high like expectations because since i was little i had always excelled like at least through middle school and then high school came you know you're like you're growing up there's a lot more going people are starting on. to separate themselves a little yeah, bit too as far as like the not the dumb ones versus smart ones but like the people who are like really intelligent because they're getting straight a's and the people who are like because like i feel like someone who didn't do homework or care really like enough would get like b's just because they're intelligent enough or, and because the coursework isn't that hard if you have a good memory yeah i feel like you could get b's but to be getting like a's and stuff like that like i feel like there's something time. extra like there time. no like, but so this is the thing though when i went to high school it's interesting that you said that because I was in a program. I was in a science and tech program, which were actually kind of like my weakest subjects. Like I really enjoy like English government and stuff like that. But I ended up testing into this science and tech program. My parents were like, you're going to go to this school and be in this program. But when I got there, I was like, oh, I'm kind of like the dumb of the smart kids <laughs> like i was like some of these kids, oh y'all smart smart <laughs> and then i mean it was diverse different. it yeah. was all black white indian asian right like, you know, and you were recommended for this or like I you tested into a program to go to the school it okay. wasn't my home high school okay um so <laughs> he said i'm the dumb of the smart kids i felt even more pressure because oh, yeah. i was just like i've been all the way up until middle school yeah. everything's cool now i've been testing in this program in this school doing science and math and technology which i'm advanced in those subjects but those are not the subjects that i like, like and yeah, enjoy yeah, yeah. so all i right. have to work harder to get those grades, get those grades. but all i have right. so much expectations based on my history and like okay that i'm, I'm also sad. like the oldest in my family how many or, siblings do you got i have one sibling okay but i'm like the oldest a majority of my cousins on right. both sides of my yeah. family right. so i was like the first one that was yeah like, yeah yeah and you i feel was a lot like of pressure you know, and i, I hear was that like, you a lot of pressure i was just like oh my god Damn, like, and you say you felt that right. pressure like yeah. you felt it was just i just felt like everybody was like yeah like you're doing so good everything every 
like holiday function and visit. School, school, school. You're doing so good in school. You're so smart. You won right. this award. You did that. And and they don't even that did that become part of your identity they, right, type shit? Like you had to you had to keep it going. Like you had. It to, wasn't like I felt like I had to keep it going. I just felt like that's what I got praised for the most. I, right. So when you get like praised for that the most, you feel like, okay, well, if I don't like this anymore, or I like don't do as well or like right. I it's gonna be like what happened what's y'all going not, on y'all not coming you through and just, saying my sketches yeah. is fire y'all not reading my motherfucking poems y'all just wait were you kidding. doing that back then were um you, I was still, I've that? always I've always like done like art like drawing and all kinds of stuff like did that. you ever show people yeah like my or you know, like my parents have seen okay. my artwork and stuff like that I just think that my success in school you know, just made people feel like, you know, you could do whatever job you want yeah, and yeah, yeah. you can get really good job. You're really smart. You're going to go to right. college and do all these things. And it wasn't that I didn't want that for myself also, but I felt like I was just kind of thinking like, this is what I should do. And being a lawyer will afford me a great lifestyle. Right, and right. I like nice things, right. and, you know, whatever, <laughs> like, because right. yeah. I've always been a very independent kind of person. And yeah. as soon as I could get a job, I got a job so I could, you know, buy things for myself or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, like, I just think that there was this expectation that I would go into the workforce and just get a very, like, high paying job or become an attorney. Like, you know, they were attorney, a doctor, right, but I wasn't right. really on the them doctor comic, path. It was like everybody just thought I was going to go to law school and be an right. attorney. Yeah. And I thought that, too, until a certain point. When I went to Bowie State and I realized how much longer it was going to take me to finish. And, you know, at that point, I wasn't really, like, passionate about that. I was just what? like, I'm an adult now. I've been doing this thing by myself, like, just trying to live and make it in the world for the right. past three years. Not living at home and stuff like that. And, you know, when it came to college, I was like, I'm just trying to, like, hurry up and get this over with so I can get that at least decent job, maybe a government job, make good money. Right. And I was just like, why is this about to take this long? Yeah, like, right. he was ready right. to be done. Right. I I'm feel not it. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I ended up going to the fine arts department and, like, just inquiring on, like, what the other options were and transferring. And credits. it was around the same amount of time that I would have took if you had stayed type so shit? So it actually wasn't. Okay. But what sold me was the fact that um, when I met my advisor, like, Going from Howard to Bowie was a drastic change in terms of costs. Right. Howard is extremely expensive. So I accumulated yeah. like a significant amount of debt right. going to that school, trying to finish and then not even finishing. Right. Bowie, um, you know, has an in-state tuition, and out-state tuition, but it's less than like one semester at Howard right. for like the year. For the rest right. of the year. Okay. So Easy when I season. met, so <laughs> yeah, it was already like, you know, that's part of the reason why I went there. I was like, it's still a very good school and I can finish here and right. it'll be way more affordable and I won't be accumulating so much more debt and all this other stuff. But my advisor, when, after I talked to him and told him I was interested in my background story, he was like, well, I'm looking for like a student aide that can work in the department. We can give you like a stipend that you can put towards like your tuition or whatever. So I basically had the opportunity to be like a student aide. And instead of like getting paid like a job, right. they would apply it to my account. So um, it just, it was like, okay, I basically had to almost start over in terms of going back to school and doing all the coursework because I completely changed majors. Like only my general credits could really be transferred because I'm doing something in fine arts now. Mm -hmm. right. But I was able to, to, to do, do something, uh, get my degree in something I was interested in and for a lower cost, mm -hmm. even lower than I anticipated because I was gonna be working with my advisor in the department. Mm -hmm. right. And I also felt like that would be beneficial Good to me experience. as somebody who's already feeling burnt out from school to have the extra support from like my advisor, my professor, right. when it came to like getting through having to do school over again. Right. But I was excited about it because I was just like, well, I'm going to actually like figure out how to get, you know, learn how to get a job doing stuff I actually like. Yeah. Right. Now, my parents were split on the matter. My mm. mom did not think it was a good idea. So this whole transition to do for the finance like, to do the She just felt what? like right. why You already there like Yeah, just like why go, like just this it. is going to take like, even longer. Right. You just need to finish. Right. Well, wait, was it, no. Was it, it was going to take one and a it was going to take one and a half years versus no, two years. No, no, that's what it should have like taken me to finish I my political science degree oh, at Bowie okay, transferring okay. based on how many credits I needed to graduate. Yeah. Right. But because of the 
the fact that that department at Bowie was, was so, so much small. small. Yeah. Like they didn't, they have, didn't have classes all the classes available until time. next semester or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. I just literally have to wait until it's classes okay, available so, so, to take it to graduate. Right. And it's going to extend my ability to get my degree that yeah, much longer. Like right. it just, I was like, this is not adding up. So like, to take, so to switch majors, to switch what majors would have took time? longer. So my mom was against it. But for me, I was, it wasn't going to, it was going to be a, a lower be expense. Cheaper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Overall. I was right. going to be able to build relationships while I'm getting through the process, learning something I like. Yeah. And yeah. like and I was you know what's funny? Field while you're doing you know what's funny shit? to me yeah. too? Like as I'm sitting here listening to you say that, I'm like, also what's, what's one or two more extra years in college like Actually, i feel like something i want to do I was, or learning I, I feel like right when i was leaving college was right when i was like i'm getting the hang of this place like you know what I'm right, right, like right, right when because I, right. I did it in five years actually yeah. so i guess i'll say like the fifth year was like a good year yeah so i was like i'm glad i, I was like i'm glad i'm here I'm happy. And you know I, what I'm saying? I feel a little older i feel like a little more seasoned but it's also too like there's like 24 year olds in college you know what i'm saying i was like 22 when i left or 21 when i was so I let me you know tell you i was older than that I because think. i took a break in between leaving howard and going to Bowie. okay um yeah. and i was just like working like when i went to Bowie. I ended up having like working in the department and having two part-time jobs oh okay so like at that point like i already knew what it was like to like be an adult and work out in the world so i was like you know what? i'm gonna experience. just go back to school what? so i can get what? a better job and that's valuable it's easier. Uh, did you but, find yeah, go ahead but the thing was when i decided to go into fine arts like you said the rationale for doing it longer was at least i'll be able to use my degree to get that good job mm -hmm. that i actually want to do mm -hmm. as opposed to just trying to get through this to get a job that i maybe that you don't still like gotta to put yeah but i say you're gonna still like getting the the political science you said that was my original yeah year. getting that you still got to now put in a lot of like that's kind of where the journey to becoming a lawyer starts <laughs> you yeah. know what i'm saying like oh, yeah. there's still to way to more school. work you got <laughs> you know what I'm saying? yeah four years. yeah like, no, no, no. four you years of law school the pass the bar, the bar. you know what i'm saying like even even the first even after passing the bar your first like couple years as a lawyer it's kind of like intern work ain't it if i'm not mistaken ain't it like yeah, kind of just like okay, intern uh, work like, like yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's still, that's kind of like another six seven eight years journey you know what i'm saying it is so um if i and it's yeah. like and because the other rationale was like i'll just get this degree and like get a government job or like you know what i'm saying but just probably doing something that like i probably wasn't necessarily passionate about just like really a means to an end so yeah i figured like you know if it's going to be if i'm going to get the skills here um and learn more about like how i can make money or get a job or work for myself doing the things i actually like to do and i'll be able to get my degree as well then i'm gonna just go ahead and do that so what's what the first you? job oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. what's the first job that you're actually able to get right after buoy that you actually enjoyed or like that with this fine arts background you're like you know Yo, like, wait, wait before you answer that yeah. question because i feel like that's a prerequisite to a question i was gonna ask which was like what did you think you were gonna use that degree Oh, do. so my right. degree. Like when you I, went and got it, where right. you were like, yes. what can I, what, th this right. is what I can do with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so my major is in, I have a bachelor, bachelor's of science in visual communications and digital media art. Okay. And my, and I have a concentration in advertising design. So I just thought I was going to get a marketing job. Okay. And like, okay. Be do, like doing advertising. And that was like the goal. Like initially, my concentration was fashion design. But at the time, I was more interested in like styling and merchandising, and they didn't have a merchandising major. Like actually, at Howard, they have a fashion merchandising, I believe, major or concentration that's separate from design, which is more about construction and becoming like an actual designer and mm -hmm. all of that. So what I did was I ended up switching to advertising design because I was interested in learning like more about software programs and because at oh. the time i had started getting into photography right. uh, i had started modeling and doing photography on the side right so i was already doing a little bit of that and i was like well i just learned more about like i'm already doing photography i learned more about like adobe and how to use all right. these program right. software to like enhance what i'm already doing um and i still ended up taking quite a few fashion design classes as electives because I was it was still an interest. It just wasn't. I knew I wouldn't, didn't want to necessarily do that as a career. But um, yeah, like I just 
So you thought, thought you was going to get go, a marketing yeah, job? I was going to do marketing. Your, okay, and when yeah. I graduated, so just to give you context, I graduated in the winter of 2017. So I was, uh, how old am I now? I was like 27, I think, when okay. I graduated. Yeah. yeah. So like when I say I was like. But you started again at what, 24, 23? What, what time did you start uh, yeah, again? Yeah, I want to say 20, 23 or 24. So you had to go to Bowie State for four Like another four years. Year, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I started all over, basically. Oh, Almost damn. all over. I mean, I guess not damn. Like, it was, like you said, like, you, you, you laid shit it out. Came. For yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But I even let... me, I don't know, because I still stand on what I said earlier, where it's like, even when I was like 26, like when I was getting a little bit, like a few years removed from college, I was like, damn, like, you kind of, you know how you have that yeah. thought, like, if I could do it again, this is what I would do. Right, that was exactly right, what right. I was thinking about with college. Right. I was like, damn, like, if I could do it again, this is what I would do. It was you know really what I'm saying? interesting for me you because nobody knew that I was that old unless they asked me or like somehow my age was revealed. Right. Yeah. Right. I like didn't live on Did campus. you blend right in? Like you blended Pretty right much. in? Right. <laughs> like, I think that, I think there were some students that, and there, you know, I have I have you know friends from Bowie that are you know younger than me or whatnot, and right. they're awesome. But I think you know initially people probably thought we're all the same age, and then like once they started talking to me a little more, that that's when people would ask me like, "How old are you?" Yeah, yeah. right. Because like, you're talking about going to work yeah, and stuff like this. Yeah, are they yeah. talking, talking about? about whole, are you going? To, you going to this party? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, like they're like. I'm, I'm, folk, I'm, like, I'm like, I come here. Yeah, right. Go you're to talking class, about other shit. Right. Do, do my do my student aid work, and then I like leave. I go to work. I go home. I do my dishes. They're I, like, yeah, I didn't. They're like, Amber, I didn't see you with the calf. I don't go to that. I literally. <laughs> Yeah. And you won't. <laughs> like, and you I won't literally went to like our student center a handful of times right. in the years that I like yeah. went there. Like I've never been to any like Bowie State parties right. yeah. or anything like that. Like I did all of that in my three years at Howard. For I right. feel that. Right. So, so like Brooke was saying, what was the net? What was the first thing that you ended up doing? After? So I actually got a job at a hair salon in DC. Okay. That the one of my part time jobs was working at a hair salon in Bethesda, like front desk. What? And after I graduated, I ended up getting a job with that same owner who was opening a new location in DC. And I was like both the manager and marketing director. Like I manage oh, okay. all their the social manager of the media. Store? The manager, oh, the manager of the, the, uh, the salon. salon. Okay. So I don't do hair, but right. I've worked in hair salons before as like an assistant and as a front desk. I just, ne I don't, like, I never went to cosmetology school or got licensed or anything like that, but I enjoy being in those type of environments. So yeah. those, that I've done that as a part-time job. Um, so they, yeah, the owner and his partner hired me. I really helped build the business up their first year. They won Best New Business in their neighborhood. Oh, wow. And I designed their website. I did their handbook. I created their whole inventory system. I did all their social media. Damn. I did like all their like photos, everything. Damn. I ended up not, not like the the place ended up closing during the pandemic and reopened. I didn't go back because the owners were white and they were like closet racist. Really? Wow. It was a really bad situation. Wow. Like that shit revealed itself during the pandemic it revealed, or something. I mean, it revealed itself throughout the entirety throughout of your my stay there. Stay there. <laughs> yeah. It you were got like, like I can use this to my. It advantage. got prog it just like it got progressively worse. Oh, like at okay. first, right. it didn't. It wasn't. There was little comments here and there, and I think you know everybody was just trying to be friends. Like a lot of those places try to cultivate a family like atmosphere. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's great, but mm. like. When you, you start, when you start yeah, watching, like not, start not uh, watching what you're uh, saying because you think it, like it's a were, lax there environment. Were, there were several things that like completely crossed the line, yeah. and then you know they they just they dropped the ball on things. They said things that were completely inappropriate, and like none of the black people that worked there ended up going back to work after the pandemic, and it became this whole thing where um, we wanted to just have a conversation about it and talk to them before we returned to work. Like a letter was written that. You know, like they signed and um, that like the people that, you know, all of us that felt the way we Whoa. signed it, like 
<clears throat> apparently they thought I was the ringleader of this, which oh is crazy gosh. because like I didn't even write the letter, but I would I supported it. <laughs> Why sure. well, they put you just, at the forefront? Well, it was just the, like the, the, you're the ringleader. It something. was just like I was like I'm flattered because obviously there's some level of like intimidation, or you just think that like that you can I, galvanize like, everybody. The thing in. Is, <laughs> because I had like organize and put together so many like important systems and okay. business in place i could have easily sabotaged everything like like i just i really could have fu- i didn't right, i was like right. i don't want nothing to do with y'all no more at this mm-hmm, point like mm-hmm. i just i'm tired of being in these type of situations i have done so much for this business i don't have no fucking benefits i don't have no nothing as a result of this business and then i i can't use this shit as a reference because mm-hmm. like y'all janky as shit I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't even want to, I'm not going to say, you know, who it is, but like, it's another white business in a black neighborhood Mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying, is fake inclusive, fake diverse. Mm -hmm. Like, we're going to put, prop these people up so we can look like this, but when it comes down to it, we're not really going to support them. We're not really going to respect them. Like, we're not going to like, we're in a place of business and where we work and where we maintain our livelihood. You can't just think that like, because this is a creative space and, you know, we're, artists and all this shit that you can just say anything to anybody when it's protests going on down the street right during the uh, facts you know what i'm that's saying like that's crazy sure. so you know like once i lose respect i can't i don't i don't, I don't have can't shit to give i know yeah. i can't give you my work i can't give you my right. my support i can't give you not can't give you a referral i can't give you anything like i'm done so, so how, how did you end up leaving that situation you the pandemic like, the, the like shit they got shut sh- down for the they sh- pandemic they had to shut down and then when they opened back up we did they just didn't come the back. thing was they had made it so like we nobody had to come back until they felt comfortable mm. and they had put that in writing mm. so we were trying to figure out if we could resolve like the internal issues and you know not feel alienated in our right. place of work so we could come back and try to work it out but it got to a point where like it was just like we really felt that we just needed to go elsewhere. Yeah, at that it point. wasn't worth like going it back. Wasn't, to it wasn't. It just really wasn't worth it. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Sometimes um, relationships can't be salvaged. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. and the thing is, I mean, because you know how I know how you really feel. Yeah, and you I mean, for, for me. me personally, you know, luckily at the time. I wasn't a high paid hourly employee like for all the work I was doing and the fact that I had two jobs. But the fact that I was working a regular job and had a W-2 allowed me to uh, get unemployment. So I was able to still pay my bills during the pandemic. And that like that having that allowed me to transition into film right um so I was say, now you got that time back and i like all right yes now for the next play. and so i had already dabbled but more so on a in the front of the camera sit uh, position right, as a model yeah right. um i was doing a lot of print modeling and photo shoots but i had a homie dante bailey who i went to high school with and he hit me up late in the middle of the night and i was like why is dante calling me i tell the story all the time right. i was like I love Dante. He cool as shit, but why is he calling me right. at like 1 a.m.? Right. Weird. So <laughs> I just like looked at my phone. And I was like, What's if it's up? important, he'll text me. Right. So I think he, um, I think he might have left me a voicemail and text me. He was like, hey, Amber, sorry, I know it's weird. I'm calling kind of late. Like that was like <laughs> right. kind of how he started right. off. It was right. so funny. He was like, but you know, I got this opportunity. I know you've been modeling and I'm shooting this Wale video tomorrow. It's going to be like an all day thing though, but like, are, and it's not paid. Are you available? So I was off. I did have a photo shoot, but I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try this. I'm going to see, I'm going to just tell the photo- photographer, like I got a really good opportunity. Like, can we reschedule? You know what I'm saying? Just let them know right. like in the morning or whatever. Yeah. As soon as I, I get up. You, but it's not today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. 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 And you know, it's I don't, you know, I I'd never like being unprofessional, but yeah, I was like, yeah, I feel yeah. like it's a great opportunity. Yeah. And it wouldn't be like my friend would be calling me at one AM if on it a wasn't. humble, like right. if it was just like some janky bullshit. Yeah. Right. So, cause I was like, he don't even hit me up like right. like that. Like you and know. this is about twenty this is about like twenty eighteen at this time. Is it? Oh, yeah, we, oh, we, oh, we 20, 2020, right? You talking about we COVID. said pandemic, pandemic right? right? So I think I did this in like maybe twenty, maybe before I graduated. Yeah, it, it might have been. 
either a little before I graduated or right after because I started actually working behind the scenes in film in a pandemic, but I did oh, okay. this video okay. beforehand. Okay. And the video was real cool. I, I got a lot of camera time and I have actually borrowed Dante's sweatshirt during the video. And the sweatshirt said, respect, protect, and love black women. And we they ended up getting a shot of me wearing the sweatshirt in the video. Mind right. you, I had just put it on because I was cold as shit. Right. And I was like, can I? He was like, you can put my, my sweatshirt on. I was like, bet, thank you. Right. That happened to belong to a really big brand mm -hmm. that I ended up doing like a whole collab thing with where they send me like their whole collection. I would wow. like send them content. Yeah. It was like a, a HBCU brand. I forgot what it's called, but black by popular demand was uh -huh. like coined by them. There's like oh, okay. a lot of knockoffs, wow. but they're originally like a divine nine brand that just expanded to like black college brand HBCU to like black empowerment. And it's a really big brand. But so that video got some attention because that big brand got yeah. attention. Right. Um, Circulated in there. Yeah. And it like, they ended up uh, like, it just got it like, so the thing was that song had like a sample in it that wasn't cleared. So we couldn't get it on like BET or any major platforms, right. but it ended up getting like some social media buzz. Like it was on Buzzfeed. It was on, um, but the thing was, the, the clothing line actually helped give it a little more attention because they had such a huge following. They ended up like using that picture of me and like sending it out to like press and mm -hmm. or like paying for promotion. And they were using that picture, like that still image from that right. video of their brand. And it's like, um, what, what was that? Uh, a, something HBCU, not HBCU apparel. I forgot what it's called, but they yeah they just did all the shit i ended up being on the shade room Damn. like for because they paid for an advertisement for their brand and i had like Damn, done all the pictures really the symbol mm -hmm. yeah he like, became the face of the company like, <laughs> people were saying like, i looked off. like a grown up blue bread, ivy like whoa uh, that was like the top comment i was like what real? i had like a little curly blonde bush okay. at the time yeah, yeah. and people were look like Oh my God, this looks like Blue Ivy when she grows hey, yo, up. That's hilarious. And then someone said I look like Rotimi. That was hilarious. That's nuts. I was that's fucking nuts. dying. I was like, I'm yo. weak. They really, said, yeah, they said I look like Rotimi. Hey, yo, I think only so like. That, that was your viral moment, huh? So, like, because, yeah. like, that's when you start to get motherfuckers just saying shit. But I crazy. <laughs> like, I, wasn't, right. just I, wasn't, saying I shit. wasn't like tagged on the post because mm. when you pay for an advertisement, they're only going to tag like one thing or depending on how much yeah, you pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't tag me as like the model or anything, but mm -hmm. hella people recognized yeah, me and yeah. were like right. tagging me and shit like that in the comments. So anyway. That's tough though. That's tough. It was, it was cool. That was, it was that's, like, that's and, dope, I, and that's I ended dope, up getting like uh, a yeah. good like partnership with this brand yeah yeah we did some really good work together and this exposure um, that's very cool that was like your first like it was that, that was like your yeah, first like, like big brand moment. sponsorship a collaborating i want to say so like yeah afterwards. that i did yeah right. on a bigger level that Word. really like you know people were kind of like oh like this is cool you're doing this stuff and after that so that went well after that they ended up hiring me to do a Lambo and Low video, and they paid me like a hundred dollars. for the This day. is the uh, this is the same production company okay, that the, um, Dante hit me up. He video. was like working with them. I okay, okay. did the Wale video. Right. Yeah. That video was on World Star. So then, you know what I'm saying? People were like, "Oh, is this you on World Star?" I was like, "I didn't even know it was on World Star <laughs> yeah, until yeah, after yeah. it happened." I was just like, "Okay, I'm getting paid for this yeah, video." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah so last I say, time I'm was getting free, and I got that yeah. big cloud. Yeah, they were like, "You're doing a good job." Blah blah blah. Shit, running up. I was like, "Cool." So after that, taking one step up the ladder every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> after that, they hit me up like, you know, they, you know, from working with them, they were talking to me. What do you do? Like I model, I, you know, was doing photography. I used to like have a blog and would like cover like local models and photographers and stuff like that because I was all the stuff I was into. Right. But um, you know, they were basically like, well, we have another shoot coming up. Um, could you help us like with casting? and wardrobe like do you do any wardrobe okay. stuff and i was like okay sure 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 right. so okay. i like found models i did the wardrobe That's i cool. ended up having a cameo in some of the videos too because they were like we need you to do this i was like played a photographer in one of the videos that i was actually like did casting and wardrobe for the video mm -hmm. um they asked me to do art direction on another video so i had started and they working with our different artists 
Uh, they're working with different artists and stuff. So like yeah, there's a like, couple of different artists, okay. but then there was like maybe one artist that they did like a three part music video mm-hmm. thing for that like was kind. Of, it was it was a it was almost like a short film. Like if you watch them back to back, what? it was like a short story. But they were also standalone music videos. So mm-hmm. like they put me on all three of those to work with them for that artist. Um, and then we would do like little small stuff. Like I've done like wardrobe for like corporate stuff like i've been a wardrobe assistant for monte ferry hospital in new york which is like a huge hospital and we did like a commercial with a ballerina that was based in dc who like i think she had cancer in her leg and the other um, hospitals mixed diagnosed her and so this was like a patient story like they saved her leg she's dancing again so like i was just a wardrobe assistant and the woman who was the main wardrobe stylist was like someone who like yeah i was like the words of stylist on friends for like 12 years Tough. like that that's kind crazy. of person yeah that's crazy so whatever like people Tough. were just i was like i've gotten thrown a lot of different opportunities and i'd be like yeah sure i can do it mm-hmm. right. like i'd be like i can do it i just yeah. yeah because you never know what type of environment or what type of experience that really puts you like around you know what i'm saying because now you able to leverage that back into what you got going yeah. on it's like yo like friends, like that shit was a number one hit on a network for many years. I mean, it's friends. Yeah. <laughs> friends you is like, like... Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm like, I feel like that's just priceless, friends. but I feel oh, like yeah. that's the type of thing, too, that you kind of have to... Depending on what you want to do with your career and shit like that, like I feel like there's so many like active banks of knowledge that are always around us. But you can just do your job and not tap into that either, yeah, yeah. right? Like Absolutely. and maybe you're not necessarily doing the bare minimum. Like you could be doing your job well and at the same time not taking advantage of yo, you're in proximity of people that are not like hesitant to like answer your questions mm-hmm. like of curiosity but yeah, yeah, yeah you have to be curious to get that shit i think people love answering volu- questions yeah nobody's gonna volunteer some shit and everybody genuinely does like to just be like damn like you they love talking about themselves I'm, people love talking you think about themselves. i knew to, yeah, and like, i don't even yeah, mean that in a vain way shit, like no, people no, like to people true. like when you're interested in them and they have an opportunity to be like this is why I'm interesting. You know what I'm saying? Or like, yeah. this is like, I appreciate right. your interest in yeah, me. Absolutely. Like no, nobody ever, no, like people rarely, people rarely get asked about like themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's rare. I think people like that. Um, yeah. I'm curious to know though, like was this work super consistent or was it like here and there? I'm curious. Like, did um, this keep you, like, was this your right. first, was this your first like sustainable gig in that industry after school or so was it kind of like here and there this is definitely the first time i work for myself um besides just a like short period of time i was unemployed and probably doing illegal activity <laughs> 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 who was it yeah. yeah but um but yeah like i can say that it can be very up and down the winter season is slow People are on holiday. They right. travel to see their family. Mm-hmm. People don't want to shoot out. It's not as ideal to shoot outside. It's cold. Right. So unless you're like, it's really important or like the weather or season fits what you're shooting, your and cost is going to go up if you have to like spend more money to book a space inside. So yeah. people, things just tend to slow down in general in right. the in the winter time. When y'all were doing these uh, like music videos and um, the corporate things and all this type of stuff, um, what was the like how long was the preparation before the actual shoot? I'm always curious oh. to know like how much how work much pre-production. Like, how, is yeah, how much pre-production is going on, and what's all the like from your vantage point? What's all like the roles involved? It's gonna vary depending on the project. I worked on documentaries. I worked on a reality show, um, an independent reality show. And I, this is all the same production company doing mm-hmm. all these it different could things. Be different, oh, but, like, okay, I okay, on, okay, okay. I thought okay, cool. That's yeah, and, and I because I say like I've been a production assistant on a Volkswagen commercial. Yeah, you know right, what I'm saying. Right. I've been a model <laughs> in a little Uzi video. That's probably one of the biggest budget productions I've ever been a part of. But I was just a model for that mm-hmm. one. But right. I took something in from every oh, single absolutely. experience. Right. But I'll say like it really depends on how big of a project it is and what it all entails. Mm-hmm. Like I would say like. For any project, bare minimum, you want at least two weeks of pre-production. And depending on what, you know, what kind of project you're working on, that is a very, can be a very short period of time. Like, you know, but at the same time, you know, 
having enough time ensures that you can get things done, hopefully early enough that like everything is locked in. Um, but you also don't want to like have to spend so much production pre-production time on like one thing. If it's like, you know, like if it's not going to be lucrative or it's not going to be sustainable, like right. it's gotta, if you're going to do that, it's gotta be something that like you're trying to pitch, you're trying to sell. That's definitely going to, hopefully get you, you know what I'm saying, something right. substantial in terms of, you know, money. Return or on investment. A return, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Exactly. Can I see your lighter? Yeah. Um, but, like, yeah, on a music video, two-week minimum. Yeah. And that's not a whole lot, but, you know, there are several people involved depending on the nature of the project. Like, you know, we have lighting music videos you usually don't need audio but sometimes you do if you're like maybe adding in something in the video where someone's speaking right. yeah right. um and people don't always think about that they'll right. be like oh let's add in a scene where he's like joking around it's like do we have mics mm -hmm. right, you know right um that called that you know pre-production and yep. also just being prepared sometimes you just want to have stuff on hand absolutely but you have your light in person. You got to get equipment. You may have to rent, and you got to like arrange that. Arrange rental that. rental houses don't be open on the weekends, so you got to get yep. it a Friday before. If you shoot Notice, on a Monday, yep. they don't open before a certain time. So if you starting at five a.m. and the store don't open till ten, you can't get some more shit or do nothing that well, that got to do with that until ten. Right. Um, and that can throw off your whole day. You might end up paying somebody overtime because yeah. of that, or right. might have to. You know, you never know. Right. Um, depending on. If we have what kind of talent we have, hair, makeup, and wardrobe, we also have to account for that when it comes to prep time. Um, you know, people don't always think makeup usually takes about an hour. Jesus. That's like, and I know every time I say that, I get a very similar reaction. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> That's a lot of time. But you got to think, like, well, you know women to go get their hair done. I mean, I, may, I it makes sense that it's a lot of time because, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. anybody that's dated and, a shorty knows that it takes her however long it takes her. You know what I'm saying? To put her makeup thing, on though. and do her thing. Editing film isn't like editing a still image where you're going to go in and retouch every pimple. Like, yeah, so it got to look. Yeah. yeah, like it needs right. to look the best possible yeah. on camera Absolutely during right. that take. And that's where right. makeup comes in, and that's important. Can't Even if you're a man, you're that. male grooming can be very important. Like if you're trying yeah. to give somebody the best impression and like you're having a, a bad breakout or you're super oily and shiny, like you're gonna want somebody to tell you, like even as a man, like, hey, like let's try to make you a little bit more right. like presentable or more, you know, like, you know, feeling good about yourself. Like that ask, can also change the energy that the person is giving. Not facts. Right. I was gonna ask, do or does it is there a difference in the amount of time it might take a man to be in makeup than a, a woman to be in makeup? Well, typically a man is going to take a, a less time less because we're time. typically just trying to, like... You're not trying to make it look like he's made up. No, <laughs> you know it's saying? more yeah. like um, male grooming. So, yeah, like, yeah. they might be, like, brushing your eyebrows a little bit to make sure they ain't, like, looking like Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe brushing your facial hair a little bit, moisturizing you, making sure you have chapstick on. Um, maybe like evening out your skin, you know what I'm saying? If you're tired and you got real heavy bags, we might want to, you know what I'm saying, even that out so you don't look as tired on camera. Nah, facts. You know, just basic things like that. Like, we're not trying to make you look feminine necessarily. Nah, fact. Did you see the joint like they did with Shannon Sharp? <laughs> Oh, did you see that nah, shit? I did it, but like, think, there was like a I picture of him. I think he, I think he just had hour. too much that makeup on one hour. time. It was a joint that was going around. It was, yeah, it was cooking. I mean, it happens sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makeup artists apply differently, and you know, like natural to somebody can mean a little bit different to somebody else. Nah, but thanks. in general, I think a lot of straight men tend to feel like makeup is just a feminine thing, or to you know make you know like will make me look feminine. When yeah. really makeup is meant to like enhance the, the appearance yeah, yeah when it's for to, tv i feel like or, or, people or to, understand yeah, it though, or right? to create an appearance and if right. you're not trying to create an appearance and you're just trying to enhance what the person has it's really just to make them look their best yeah yeah like you have special effects makeup that's not feminine at all mm -hmm. people look like their eyes is falling out the head like <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's yeah. also makeup yeah, but facts. you know what i'm saying so but basically you have to kind of, you have to you know, I'm reaching out to all these people on the crew, camera operators, director, assistant directors, um, production assistants, hair, makeup, wardrobe, lighting, sound, um, maybe a set designer, any of those people that we need, depending on what's required. Like, 
You'll, we'll have a treatment which outlines what the project is, the aesthetic, the idea or concept behind it. And that's kind of like the guiding, um, what we use to guide us through production based on like whatever the director's vision is. Um, and then everybody, like all the departments, all the necessary departments communicate. As a producer, I communicate with everybody and try to follow up to make sure all the other necessary departments communicate with each other. Um, and then we, all, we have to put together a schedule um when and, that, not to interrupt mm -hmm. but when do you get to that moment where people are now like yo we need you to come on set as a producer like that's what we need you to do because mm. you fulfilled all these different types of roles you know on different types of sets when is it like yo amber yeah, we need so you to produce this it's set. crazy because after the production company that i work with primarily now they're my main client and my production family uh cool kids, cool kids forever. forever yeah man yes shout out to cool kids. um you know shout out to everybody in cool kids they're definitely like my production family and they definitely like gave me a lot of opportunities in film and like usher me in and that's kind of um, how i even met shaw for mm -hmm. even context i i helped out uh did some pa work via leon for the kingpin video mm -hmm. so like not nah, definitely yes get get to yes see exactly you know how y'all move and shit. yes nah, yes 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 leon he's He's a really great gaffer. Yeah, yeah. He works with us like all the time. We For try sure. to like work with him as much as possible. Um, Leon's worked on some really big, amazing projects. He's Facts, very, very man. talented, man, especially to be so young. He's also just a really like good person. Like he's always trying to figure out how to connect people and how to plug people into opportunities. He's given me a lot of opportunities um, to not only like be a part of like productions as a producer but like even other things right. leon had me do set design for the wale uh j cole poke it out video it's crazy and i had to build walls <laughs> that crazy. were in the video See? for two seconds yeah. like at the end oh, we, is that crazy. something you had experience doing or he would just um, like yeah I've like could you do this like sometimes you just know somebody did you say you used to draw did you say you used to draw and like uh, let me tell y'all i've done <coughs> set design in the past not to that level yeah. in terms of like when they were like we need you to build these walls we have flats but you're gonna have to like find find the ones that don't have any cutouts or like door or window cutouts because basically like the wall flats are what you can use to create like a set like a three right. wall set with the fourth wall mm -hmm. open for the camera, camera. Right. um so you know the guy who was um you know like our director we were shooting on his property out far out and he has like this barn warehouse where he has all these wall flats and he's like so yeah you're gonna do this and they were like you've done this right and i was like yeah what? No. <laughs> i was just like yeah i can do it leon was like they called me and were like you you know she can do this right and i was like yeah and i was like leon <laughs> I mean, I, I'm gonna do it, but like, right. I'm not a carpenter. Right? Where's the carpenter? Right. They were like, we're gonna send some guys to help you. None of these guys are carpenters. They're just like men with like, <laughs> man power. Right. They're, right. Just not man. they're literally they're just guys. They did help, right. but yeah. I thought that I didn't know that it worked like this. Yeah, like this yeah. is, right. and this is a big production company. That you know, Leon's, you know, there's and there was a bunch of other people I knew working on set. I was so happy to see all these familiar faces right. working with this big production company. They're you know, a dope company, but I definitely was like, I, I can do this, I can do this. Like, I was telling them I could do it. I've never built wall flats, I've never built wall flats by myself before, or right. like, you know, what I'm saying, like, I even asked. You know the creative director like do you have you built this she was like not without a, a carpenter but i was like okay we well, you know what girl we just want to jump out. in we're all right. gonna do this she and helped. The guys helped we put it you know what i'm saying we worked on it the day before the day before and then the next day we had to paint it some more and do all this stuff for the two second cameo but i also did the other stuff like they were supposed to be like glamping like it was like a whole camping thing okay and they had like the tents and we had like champagne bottles and okay. i had like fur blankets okay, and okay, these okay. really nice pillows and stuff in That's the well. tents and like arranged them so they like well. looked right and we set up like this little party with all these string lights like outside under this like little it was just like a barn like open out in the field type of shit kind of thing tough. going on um it was a cool experience but it was really crazy because that was one of those times 
I was like, yeah, I'm really faking it right now <laughs> until I fucking make yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. It if worked out though. But yeah, I, I don't know if I look at it as faking it. I feel like. I just believed Every in time, myself. I got I'm, on fucking YouTube. That's literally what I, I was about to say. I figured it the fuck out. I, I knew like, at least where to look for the right. answers. You got right. thrown an opportunity. Right. You accepted the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like if I you wouldn't have done it, like, if you were not going to do a good job, I'm sure they would have just been like, okay, like thanks for your efforts, but you know, There's this a isn't what we're looking for. Got past the play. Hey, that's that's kind and of I'm the not point. Even gonna lie. I did have some doubts after I initially met with them and they told me what they wanted me to do because I was like, am I supposed to be doing this by myself? Like, how am I going to do this? And I think I called Leon maybe after or talk, I talked to him at some point after and I was like, yo, this isn't really my lane, bro. Like, I appreciate you. You know, I've done set before, but set design, but nothing like to this level. And I like, I just, I don't want to like commit to this and then like fuck it up. And like you then vouch for me. And he was like, no, I'm pretty sure you could do this. Like right, his energy right. was just like, yeah, right. if I didn't think you could do it, I wouldn't have like, you know, told them right, and, yeah. you know, like, I'm pretty sure you can do this. So yeah, like you can do it. And he was just like so confident and he was such a good friend. I was like, but like, okay, I'm gonna right, figure it out. Feel, I right, called that. in reinforcements. <laughs> I got the help I needed. We got it done. Um, and the video came out great. Like regardless of how long it was used, Right. You know, yeah. I did what I, I did the best that I could. That's all I could do with the time and resources and knowledge that I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And, Wait, you know, everything else I did, I feel like was great and was like exactly what was asked for, what was wanted and also the best I could do. And I'm really proud of like being able to say I did that for that video. Like I didn't produce it, but like right. I did definitely did, you know, had an important role in contributing to the aesthetic of the shoot and got to work with a lot of good people. So it was cool. No, nah, that's facts. I think that's, I'm listening to that story and I'm just like, man, there's so many instances in life where someone believes in you more than you believe in yourself in a given moment that just like right. makes you do something right. that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, 100%. I think about the first few videos I ever shot in my life where ones where people were just like oh no i want you to do this for me yeah, <laughs> and i was just like right, i don't right, really right. like i'd be bullshitting for myself because yeah. i don't really care how it turns out like you know what i'm saying like this is something i yeah. do because like, i don't really like I, I'll, I'll be satisfied with whatever the end result is and people and people were like yeah but I, you know if you feel that way with my thing too cool <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, i just i want you to do it and i'm just like damn well okay i guess you know what i'm saying but i feel that like yeah. there's sometimes where you literally don't it's that self doubt thing. We all know what it is, but I think I think uh, when it, we actually feel it and go through it, it's like, damn, it's crazy that that actually went through my mind because somebody else was like, I don't even see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even see what it is you see. I see that you can give me what I'm looking for. You can do exactly what I need you to do. But what's also really cool is when you're on the other side of it, and then you had you start doing that for other people. Kind of like, yo, oh. I did that. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, that's. Not only is that like, okay, add to the resume, but now I feel comfortable mm -hmm. of doing that. Or like, maybe that's something like, yo, I'm really going to hone in on that craft because that's something I can definitely, I have ideas. You know, I, I, was, about to, I was literally about so to like, say, sometimes yeah, after you do the you thing, know? you're reviewing it and you're like, damn, I could have did this. You know what I'm saying? Like next time I'm going to do this. You know what I'm right, saying? Now right. you start to be like, okay, I knew I could have did more and they were super satisfied with yeah. this. Like that puts an extra thing in your back where you're like, right. The next time you do it, then you get a little bit better. Then the next time you do it, you get a little bit better. Then this becomes what you do. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so. it's very interesting how, but it's so, it's just so interesting. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm It's so interesting to me. But yeah, when it comes to film, though, like, space had to be made for me. Like, I wasn't aware that there were opportunities for me in film outside of, like, talent and hair, makeup, and wardrobe before I like did those two videos with that production you company and then they asked role. you didn't think they were there for you or you didn't well, think they were there well the thing is like after i was in the videos they were like can you help us find more models and can you help us with wardrobe and i'm like okay cool mm -hmm. then it was like the art direction also so i was like okay that's cool too like i like the but before you started getting on these sets and doing these things you didn't know that these were even positions is i that know what you're saying? those type of things were positions mm -hmm. and like a lot of women that you know were had those roles in entertainment you know you had to be and maybe film, qualified for but this or... like I didn't know a, I didn't know what a film producer did. Like basically, oh yeah, facts. Yeah. Basically, um, after doing a myriad of different roles and you know for these productions, 
uh, the director I was working with, Bio, was like, so, like, what of these do you actually do, like, for real, like? Right. And like, what did you say? Hire you. And I was like. And what did you say? <laughs> I mean, I kind of do all of them. Like, yeah. They were like, well, what do you really want to do? Which one do you really want to focus on? And I was like, to be honest, I don't know. Like, and I'm kind of, like, ashamed to say that, but, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm trying that. things, and I like all these things, but I really don't know which one I'm, like, so passionate about that I want to like focus all my energy on it and he was like are you interested in producing and I was like what's the producer like what do you mean like a well, film producer and I was like I know what music producers do but I don't know what film producers do and he was like well basically like you got you put together the shoot like you handle all the logistics and you know they were like we'll teach you though like well, you know, I'll, I'll have you produce some projects we got coming up and I'll like I'll teach you what it's about and that's how I started. Like, so shout out to Bio, shout out to Six and Cool Kids. Um, like, they basically started having me on their sets. And by 2020, I had done two Raheem Devon music videos. Tough. Like, that's my guy. And, and y'all just wrapped up a couple more. I right? work with yeah, him now. Like, we do his content did. and his videos yeah. now. And that's crazy. He was one of the first artists I work with, and probably the biggest artist I work with at the time as a producer. Um, and so like, it was a lot of pressure. We did two videos in one weekend, a Friday and a Sunday. And I had, I feel like I had like a week to produce, like do all the pre-production. Mm -hmm. And I obviously like was still new to producing. So there was still a lot of other production, like producing work being done by like the director and the people like six that brought me in. Like we were having calls. That's what I mean when like I was on, a, on calls all day for like 12 hours right. like couldn't move because like i have to do this i have to email these people i have to take this other call i have to reach out to these 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 people um it was so and one of the videos was a period piece it was set in the 70s that means everything has to be 70s right. the right. wardrobe the hair the makeup the hairstyles for the men mm -hmm. like some of them we had to put wigs on they couldn't have locks mm -hmm. right, like right, how right. Brooke has not like that it. wasn't gonna work for the 70s <laughs> right. um you know like what is so, the 70s the 70s like the the afros froze like the small froze. and i feel like did people still have those chops the cyber yeah, yeah, yeah. chops yeah. Yeah. Beard, I'm trying, I'm that place thing. myself there yeah. stuff yeah. like that yeah. um, i hear that but yeah so it was a whole period piece. Everything had to be on point. So that in itself was very specific. And then all of this. Does that make it easier or harder? Because like you know, you know exactly what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like but if it's the seventies, you like you, you got a visual. But you know if what I'm you saying? don't emulate it, like <clears throat> if you don't pay attention to detail and emulate it, it it's not going to come off as authentic. Right. So like when you see like the movies that are period pieces, the amount of time and effort that has been put into trying to make sure that there are no slip ups, like you have to watch those uh, YouTube videos where they'll be like, 10 bloopers in movies right, that were right. that so were set in like, different times right. that show and it was like so and so had a watch in Game of Thrones or some right. shit. They didn't, they didn't make uh, they didn't make uh, G Shocks back in the seventies. They didn't have watches. Period. <laughs> we're talking about Game of Thrones. Ain't no oh, fucking oh, watch. Game of Thrones. I thought you Ain't said no fucking yeah, clocks yeah, that's like no, on right. the wall. Like right. they don't right. got none of that. No, facts. <laughs> so no, it'd be no, little shit like that. Like who the fuck let this nigga have a watch? Where you got a watch from? Who let him have a watch on this? See, like, <laughs> smoking you cigarettes are and the shit. continuity for this time period. You notice that after the fact, you're like, yo, what the fuck? You got to call funny. everybody back. Yeah, yo, oh you got you, to you set up a reshoot. You, yo, oh look, if you're a movie buff and you ever watch those type Dog, of I was literally about like, to, like, you know what's funny? Some That's something, I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, I guess we kind of know, like, y'all do this shit too, but I be doing that. I Not necessarily with, like, period piece things like trying to find the inconsistencies but in shows comedy specials uh like movies anything i try to figure out not figure out but when there's like a wrong cut or like some kind of miscut or yeah. something yeah. i'd be noticing them and i literally will rewind and like right, watch right, it right, again right. to make sure my right. eyes didn't right. deceive right. me you know what i'm saying like even if it's um like in a dialogue and you can tell you know how they right. do the over the shoulders you can tell like like I, they might be looking at you 
and over my shoulder. Yeah. But you can tell that it's a clip that I'm talking in, but they make it look like you talking, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they'll use your verse, but maybe, or they, they'll use your line, but I might be talking too, but they'll silence me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. can see the head moving as if I'm talking type shit. Like, I like, I like finding little things like that in, in TV shows. is, when you become a filmmaker... You start noticing so much more shit about the shit. What's that you the watch. biggest thing that you always notice and shit, or look the out camera for? Camera shaking, like I'll be like, "What the fuck is the camera, camera shaking?" Shake. So weak. Oh, <laughs> camera oh shakes. God, Yo, I'll funny. be like, they don't have a tripod, right? Like, cause I've watched some some, and I'm think like decent movies, and I'm like, "What's up with the fucking camera?" Like, yeah, right. but is- but. This is apart from when, like, that's part of what the shot, like, the shot, if that makes sense. Like, sometimes like first, like, you like, want a shit. Sometimes they do artificial no, shaking like, on the camera. it's not supposed to be. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to. It's okay, like, right, okay. it'll be things where, like, to me, it's blatant that, like, the cameraman was just, like, shaking mm. or the, and there's no stabilization or steady cam okay, or anything okay. that's helping. Or this shot really just should have been on a tripod if there was no way for this person to stabilize this better. But, like... Like, I just, I never used to notice things like that. Yeah. And now everything, like, I was watching this one. People kept recommending me this zombie show. Right. Um, but I started watching it, and the girl, zombie, was like, she had turned to a zombie, but she was running. And when I tell you she was running, and it was like, <sighs> You can hear the breathing in the shit. <laughs> breathing loud as shit. Yeah. I was like, a week. I'm like, bro, this is not supposed to sound like this. Yeah, yeah, Ain't no yeah. fucking way they got her as a zombie sound yeah. like this. And nah, I was just facts. like, right. it was too many fucking things like that. It was a lot of like little sound errors. I was like, every five minutes, I was like, what? The yeah. Fuck now I love discovering shit. Brooke, do you have anything that you like to that you no so like to look out for? In, in these are the uh, things. So. I definitely would tell y'all to say I'm more so I like to see how things are color graded and I like mm. to see the transitions more as opposed to the blue. I, it, it's always dope to yeah. see that. Like, I'll be like, damn, like I didn't even peep that, especially in shows. Sometimes I've watched and I'll be like, damn, I didn't even peep that. But I'm more so really like to see how things get like color graded or how shit like flows in terms of how they might cut. Different yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking I at do. That type of eye I I can resonate with that. I do love a beautifully color graded movie or some shit like this. Like American Hustle to me is one. And when I was like trying, you have, have you guys ever seen American Hustle yeah, with Bale, like Jennifer right? Lawrence and um, Christian Bale, Bale yeah. mm-hmm. um, Bradley Cooper? Uh-huh. Um, when I was first starting with not first starting, but when I was really paying attention to um, that, like color grading my shit. That was something that I always look at because it all it. I, I just loved how that movie, how that movie was like right. the colors of that right. movie. You know what I'm saying? And that's just one example. Like Dark Knight or Joker is even another one. Like some 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 that's that sticks out to me too. Is what I'm getting at. Like I love a movie that's like really well color graded, really like, well lit. I'm like a Pulp Fiction kind of person. Like I oh yeah love yeah yeah dramatic yeah, yeah. like color theory lighting up in there that's like right. foreshadowing to something ominous or something crazy i love the look of right. quentin tarantino movies mm-hmm. too yeah, like yeah, I, his movies always look very um clean is not the word i'm looking for but it's dr- like clean it's like, like clean how he does what he does so, you know what i'm like saying so like so dramatic and over the top but they're like so concise yeah, and like right. shot so well right. that it's like the squirt, the blood squirt on the wall coming out of the person's right. severed neck is just like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, oh shit, Bill's this is fine. happening. Like, fine. it's it's nah, like, it's Quentin enticing. Tarantino is a different breed. He's Do crazy. you have um any favorite, like, uh, Filmmakers or fil- favorite directors? Tarantino director, is up directors? there for me. I really do like I would agree. his films. I, I agree. think, you know, he's he's definitely controversial in some ways. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> absolutely. I, I really do enjoy his films. I really like Ava DuVernay. Yeah, I yeah. saw yeah. Um, Origin. That was a phenomenal movie. Like, I highly recommend that everyone watches I don't think Origin. I've seen that yeah, yeah. Check that. Um, it's check so, that. so, so good. It's based on a book. And I keep saying this and also forgetting, but I I wanna read the book as well. Um, Very, very good. I think she's such a talented director. What was that movie, what was like her first big movie? I'm trying to remember what she directed. It's like on the tip of my brain. I can't, uh, I wanna say the Martin Luther King movie, but I thought that was the first one. 
I don't know. If she that's what Selma. I was about to say, yeah. uh, Selma. That's what I'm thinking did she of. Make Selma? Yeah, she think directed so. Selma, yeah, yes. She did? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a major. Yeah, that's right. Pop. No, yeah, I, re- I remember Selma for sure. Yeah, that was a major movie. I think she's done some other, like she did. Um, did she do Wheel of Time with Oprah? That was like a um wrinkle, children's wrinkle, of wrinkle time. time. Yeah, yeah, wrinkle of time. That might have been the yeah. That joint also went. Down. I will follow. Okay, it might wrinkle, be some of that. I'm wrinkle talking about. and time went down. Yeah, like Ava, Dene- Ava, Ava, Ava Duvernay. Ava Duvernay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brooke, do you have any favorite directors? Um, I don't know if I've she, ever asked you this long. Yeah, than you. Uh, you know, I fuck with Paul Thomas Anderson, Richard Linklater. He's like a low key. Drunk. Yeah, Linklater. He made uh, Slackers. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, uh, Boyhood, right? Yeah, 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 like yeah, that, yeah. To film a joint. Linklater's over crazy. Twelve years. He's the nigga. Yeah, he he's, he's the nuts. nigga that will do like, shit like that. Yeah, yeah, Linklater's so, crazy. Um, who else? Oliver Stone. Fuck with him, even though he's a nut. Fuck, <laughs> I, I, I fuck with his films. Um, who so else? Who else? Uh, I have two to add. Yeah, yeah, go I, ahead. Issa Rae and uh, is it Quinta? Quinta Brunson? Quinta Brunson. Quinta Brunson. I love yeah, them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They're tough. They're freaking hilarious. They're I tough. love their type Issa of humor. Tony. Yeah. Abbe Elementary is hilarious. I love Insecure. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't finish um, like rap shit, but I, when was I was that good? I never. I don't think I even started it. They canceled it. After what, two, three seasons? Yeah, I didn't. Three? Seasons? Yeah, I, didn't um, three? I think so. Yeah, it was at least two. I don't remember. Yeah. I didn't watch the first yeah, season, I didn't but watch too much I just really like like. Nah, insecure. I fuck with for sure. Abbott Elementary. I fuck, I, I fuck with Quinta and went no They're when so Quinta funny. was doing this shit on Instagram. <laughs> the uh, oh, you got money. She said, oh, you got money. Like, uh, yeah, that yeah, like yeah. when she was doing those little skits. <laughs> Hilarious! Not to say that Abbott, I love Abbott yeah. Elementary. I still watch yeah. that. But um, she she been basically what I'm saying. She's been funny. Yeah. Like she's been. I she's saw been like Issa Rae's like Issa awkward Rae black girl. Awkward before. black girl was good too. Yeah, yeah. insecure yeah. and that shit was hilarious because man, shit I was, was real relatable big. as fuck. I was like, yeah. yo, man, that was the time. That was the time when I was obsessed with trying to figure out how to do like a show like that. I'm like, damn. Motherfuckers could really just make a full on series, yeah, a drunk, TV drunk, show, drunk and put it on YouTube. Like, I was obsessed with Issa Rae at that time. And then she got that joint turned into Insecure on HBO. I was like, this is crazy. Another show that was like that that I was obsessed with was um People Just Do Nothing. You ever seen that show? Ooh, that sounds interesting. People Just Do Nothing. It was a, sh- it's like, um, you ever seen The Office? Yes. It's like The Office, but it's with a British like uh, underground rap group like it's so it's so fucking yeah, random but it's so fucking funny like it is a, it was on netflix the last time i checked it wasn't on netflix but this was in like 2015 i was okay. watching it right. but um they they would do it was like four of them and it was basically it was literally like the office they would uh follow them around while they would do shit um and then they would do these little testimonials and shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but they would do it on YouTube, like, with their cell phones. You know what I'm saying? At first. And then they got picked up by uh, the BBC, which is, mm-hmm. like, the British mm-hmm. big. It's, like, their ABC. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then, you know, they got, like, a five-season deal to do to, like, make it basically, like, insecure. You know what oh, I'm saying? Wow. So, but, like, watching that show on Netflix had me rolling. And then I somehow kind of stumbled upon something about them on the internet like mm-hmm. i went down to some kind of like reddit rabbit hole about their show mm-hmm. and then i come to find like it, you know they were doing it for years on youtube mm-hmm. like they were trying to get people to like get interested in it, all kinds of shit right. and i'm just like damn like these motherfuckers really came out the mud with this right? uh-huh. very similar to how Issa came out with the, uh, with uh flatbush awkward black girl flatbush misdemeanor so, is like, another great example of that like, yo, the yeah it's yeah, literally the same kind of thing funny. like that he's like yo he was trying to get yeah. that shit off the girl yeah the I, I love shit like I that i love stuff like that i, I wanna like that. i really want to 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 do like a a film version of the office with black people yeah because literally <laughs> i feel like that's how a lot of my sets are are you a big office fan i i'm not like a fan whereas like i know like this episode oh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Like, but you like the sh- you like how the I show is enjoy watching yeah the show. yeah like I've ne- i don't i haven't watched it like straight through or in order or like anything like that but the concept oh, of the show is, is interesting so to you funny. yeah 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 so parks and rec is good i feel like i feel like those kind of shows what they call them mockumentaries i feel like those mockumentaries they're kind of a gold mine. You can't really go wrong with them. I mean, and I might be, I might bite my words one day. Uh, yeah. But a lot of the shows that do that, Reno Nine One One, hilarious. To, you ever yeah, watch Reno? Uh, yeah, fact, fact. Have you, you, I have Reno is crazy to me. Yeah. Reno like, is crazy to me. We had so my production company is so hilarious that we have compiled two reels worth of bloopers. 
I'm weak. Tough. From us on set, just from like the past. Mm, I mean, at least the past. I want to say year. Like I don't think. But a good amount of time. A tough, good yeah. amount of time. Yeah, like yeah, cause yeah. we we just we this, last year we just did like from the summer to the end of the year we just started pumping out like projects. So right. at least like I don't know if we started right when we started everything, but at some point like those last mains at least six months of the year there's been a lot of content that's been compiled and yeah we have these like two blooper reels on tiktok that are hilarious no, like, we, just dope. the content is to get made no, i'm gonna i'm you. gonna show you i'm gonna send I'll yeah, send i need to see that i need to see that to I, and to your point because you said um something about i'm i think we were talking about like the the office is just very relatable in the mm-hmm, sense that mm-hmm. when you're in your own little like community uh, like everybody kind of fits yeah. you know they they they, right. they they all could be a character essentially yeah. right. everybody kind of in in real life is like a character in their own lives you know what i'm saying like the there's song. there's people that i've worked with in the past that are literal characters i used to work in this uh physical therapy clinic and i worked with like in the front desk when i was like fresh out of uh college mm-hmm. um there was these two old ladies, two older like white ladies at the uh, front desk that like worked with me. They they were the like most interesting duo, <laughs> like like straight up. Like I loved them, they and they loved me. Like we like we, it was a very interesting like relationship the three of us had. But the two of them, because I would come in like when they were they I would come in, they would stay for like another hour and then yeah, leave. Yeah. So I would we would always interact for like a little bit of time. But one of them was like super talkative, dog. Like literally, if you come to the front desk to like make an appointment, she's wrapping you up for like <laughs> twelve minutes, and in like right. a very sweet way. But it, it was funny. I would sit here and watch her. Like the way she could just go from one conversation to another, it's just it was hilarious to me. I'm like, dog, she is literally a Thanks character. As far as show. it's it was it's it, like she's funny by herself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and even even to the point where. The funniest shit was shit was shit that she didn't mean to say. She's the type of person she talks so much that she accidentally says shit. You know what I'm saying? What like, you, like, what you, like she'll say something that she didn't mean to say. You know what I'm saying? Like she'll say so, and like this is all due respect because like I I really loved her, um, but she would literally say shit like, um, dog. She would just say shit that she didn't mean. Not not like racist shit. You know what I'm saying? Nothing crazy. I was like, she would literally say something like, "My face was giving." No, no, (laughs) no, because you, you, you you was like, "Wait, like what?" No, no, nothing crazy, crazy, but something like, um, I don't know, like I don't know, I don't, I don't, I I can't even really explain it. (laughs) It's, it's more on some okay, like as a company, we know this, and it was a small little like Mm -hmm. group. It was like, uh, you know, like it was a physical therapy clinic. Mm -hmm. It was a small operation. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, a small business. So we might have a meeting about like. Oh, like this is what we're gonna tell clients about this. Or this is what we're gonna tell customers about this. And she might just like slip up and say something that was opposite what we said we were gonna. You know what I'm saying? Just like little things like this. Yeah. Like, but no, what would no, be funny to me wrong. is that like she be like rambling so much that she would like say something. She'd be like, "Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that." Like, and I'm like, I'm the type of person that you know what I'm saying. Anytime I say something, I know what I'm gonna say. Right. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's to strangers. She just blurring shit out. Hold she just us. talks so much. You know what I'm saying? But like, she was very cool. So um, no, that just it just reminded me of like yeah, I, when I was working there, filled with characters, and then yeah. don't not even to mention the people that would come in, like you know what I'm saying, the regulars that come in, fact. they're fucking characters. That's what you know I have with Uber, like that shit inspired a oh, whole little show bruh. I never really did, but yeah, just Uber's like yo, right, doing that motherfucker. Yeah, anybody you know hopping up in your car. I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot of. Um, there's ways that are people that people are getting their Uber experiences off as far as like content. Do y'all see this? Like, no. there's like, there's like, there, don't give up the sauce. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, I'm saying, there's there's no, ways that people me. are getting off. There's there's you'll see um, like the carpool karaoke. You ever okay. seen carpool okay. karaoke? Okay. There's somebody that does this with there's an they're, they're an Uber driver and they do this with their Uber passengers. You know, y'all never like, seen do this? You do it's that. like a shorty that's that. like uh, she'll do a duet do you with do some carpool karaoke and like she does she ask them before? Um, I, I think I think oh. like they know it because they're 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 all into it. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. If that makes sense. And and somebody like, even how- somebody even garnered their own like following off of their joint being so good but if that how do makes they sense. know they're gonna get her or like how do they do you, you can like make a special request for a, a carpool karaoke 
Uber driver? Like, I think it's work? more on her. I think it's more on her to be like, this is what I do. Do the you want to say? That's what I'm like, saying. Yo, like, right. when you're, I've never, okay, I've never, like, been an Uber driver or anything. So, yeah. like, when you get, like, notifications for, like, hey, there's a pickup over here. Right. And you accept it, like. Are you sending the person like, hey, I'm a carpool karaoke Uber driver. <laughs> you want to ride with me or not nah before I accept your ride? Oh, wait, because I'm not out here wasting rides. Hilarious. Like, if you're this not singing, I'm not saying, thinking. Because, <laughs> right, because if they're not trying to do the shit, are you canceling on them? Or no, I don't think, I think if I, you don't want to do it, you don't do it. Right, you know what I'm saying? So she okay, I'll just take you where you want to go. Say, yeah, hi, I'm your Uber driver. I would imagine. Do you do exactly. karaoke I would imagine me that. And you would like, yes or no. Right. I would imagine that they're making sure. I'm just saying you know she might want to you know she might need a release for her. she and might need to cover hilarious. herself yeah, you, know, yeah, you never yeah. know but i'm just i'm just curious as to like how how is this becoming a community thing where like these people but people karaoke but you, passengers are linking with dog. the carpool karaoke drivers <laughs> we're in a time we're in a time where people love being on the internet i know i'll be the nigga be like nigga, people love keep you. this shit moving man. yeah <laughs> like, i want to do no damn keep car cool karaoke you know what i'm saying i put it on like silent Don't, like ride, do not right? speak oh yeah silent ride and in the ride i i literally thought to myself i was like damn this nigga barely saying anything and then i was like oh yeah this is what i asked for oh, Fuck. No. i was like you like oh, the silent you, ride you with the, with i think i was like i don't know if i was gonna say something to him or what and it made me think like he's barely said anything because mm-hmm. most uber rides like the person they will just says a talking. little bit they yeah. might say something you know or like hey how are you yeah. doing blah 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 they're t- typically a little more a tad bit more right. conversational right. yeah but i literally forgot that i had requested a silent ride i was so like, you thought he was like snubbing you or something yeah i was like, I was like <laughs> i'm literally like i wonder if he had a bad day i'm like thinking about this yeah, guy i'm like yo, i wonder where he's hilarious. from what's I'm crazy wondering, like, I'm, I'm wondering all these yeah. questions that about this man hilarious. because we haven't talked in like most Uber rides, whether I want to talk to the person or not, I end up talking to them because they're yeah. talking to me. And, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I, I work in film and I'm, you know, right. I'm from here. Right. Do you got your, your spiel down? Like what you let people know? Because like I, I know I find myself people like, oh, what do you do? And I can I can explain what I do in so many different ways that it's like, OK, I got to find a better way to make this concise. Yeah, I'm like, you I'm know what I'm saying? I handle the logistics. Yeah, facts. Like that, just keep it simple. I don't. No fuck. And I, I will say, I just be like media. <laughs> yeah. Like media. Those type of take situation. that out. Like, you will. Yeah, I'm not like. Never mind me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Tell well, me about you. Yeah. Nah, like, facts. Don't, don't worry about me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know. I I don't really like talking in Ubers, but I also feel like they'll feel a way if I request a silent ride. I just hope that they don't speak to oh, me. Oh, I didn't even think about yeah, that. That's crazy. Get your get paid. This is yeah, yeah. What? Nah, yeah, no, I, feel, I hear you. I, the logic isn't really sound. I just... First of all, <laughs> I how, look are you, like, how are you mad I don't want to talk unnecessarily? Yeah. I don't give a fuck how you yeah, feel. Yeah, like, I don't know like, you. I just need a ride. I'm sorry, like, <laughs> like what? let's just get here and, like, get here safely. I think it's, and- but you know what's funny? I think because I, I think because I have, like, a, it's absolutely a toss-up, but I've met interesting people through random conversations. So I think I don't want to close myself off to having a random conversation. But in my natural state, I usually would rather just be, especially around strangers, I usually would rather just be quiet than be in a conversation. But I don't, I know that like I've had serendipitous moments just because like I said something to the person behind me, next to me, in front of me. You know what I'm saying? Have y'all ever experienced something like this? I just more so feel on some. I don't like to prevent things like in these types of. If we're just talking about for the sake of commute type shit, I'm not really one that's gonna spur conversation. But if somebody feels the need to talk, I'm more so just come off some. I'll respond to. You. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be you responsive. It's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. But depending on the situation, I'm not really gonna like push yeah. conversation. Yeah. But at the same time, that. too, you know, it's all about that bandwidth and whatever you got. Like, if I'm headed to wherever the fuck I gotta go. Really, I'm not trying to. I'm not initiating conversation yeah. like more than likely, That's like it. unless it. it's something pertaining to the ride itself. Like there's something going right. outside. Yeah, if we're talking in an Uber, I'm never in initiating but, conversation, and, and but I'm never, open to I've, conversation. I've personally never had any Uber rides where I've like, for whatever reason, connected with 
the Uber driver. Passengers where it's say, like, What's your favorite movie? Anything, oh, I like that movie too. Movie. Yeah, yeah, like I be trying to like you know, I'm a woman. I be trying to get in the Uber. Yeah. Get out. Where yeah. I'm supposed to be. I hear that. I hear that. You I hear know, that. I'm not trying to make friends <laughs> in my Uber ride. I'm uh, trying to just get a ride. Cheers Pay to that. For it. That's cheers all. To that. Just need to get from A to B. <laughs> <laughs> No, I hear that. Did I open up Uber? I open up Facebook. <laughs> Don't want to connect for real. Like I'm weak. Nah, that's it's funny one thing hell. if they're super cool and I'm like, you know what, girl? Or you know, five let's, stars. That's there you, you know go. Yeah, right. <laughs> you get five stars like, out of me. As you being the professional and me being the patron, let's just like, please, just get me here. And yeah, yeah. Let's just keep it that way. Yeah, nah, give me I just appreciate. Give me just that. <laughs> Amber, what else you got going on? Like, what else do you have coming down the pipe that you're either looking forward to, want to let us know about, for or sure. um, just what's like, 2024? You know, yeah, like? what's what's 2024 looking like for you? Year. What you excited about? That's good. That's good. Um, I'm gonna be starting a podcast. Oh, I'm working on it. Okay, I'm trying not to get into the everybody has a podcast <sighs> no 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 no. It's no, no, no. content. It's all about that's content, not I, yeah. Like don't first worry, of all, yeah. I don't know. I, I think that. Is like a weird. No, uh, I don't. I don't listen to that. I feel like there's billions of people in the world. There's a lane for everybody. Like yeah, 100%. yeah. 100%. But you know, and, and podcasts are like. I say this all the time. Podcasts are like TV shows. Like mm-hmm. you can never, you can never have enough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like and all of them. You can, and I can watch all the different. TV shows. That's what I'm saying. Like I can watch all of the TV shows. You know what I'm but saying? And know, I still have time to watch well, more. I think, the th- <clears throat> I think the thing is like. I'm also helping a, a couple people like try to get their podcast off the ground and start. Right, so it just seems right. like oh, you have a podcast, you have a podcast, you have a podcast. We all have podcasts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. um, but no, I'm really excited um, about you know what I'm saying. Creating a platform for myself where you know I can just kind of speak more about what I do and how I can help. You know, like anybody else who's trying to do some of the things that I do, like. Ultimately, I feel like one of my purposes is to help people, and I feel like I do that through, like, inspiring and education, educating people um, through what I know. Like, I don't by any means feel like I'm, like, an expert at being a filmmaker or producer or anything, yeah. but I do have information that I can give that if you're just starting can help you, like, you know, get on the right track. And so, like, I always want to find ways to, like, share that um and also to just like give other people a platform to feel like they're being heard and you know they're being seen um because a lot of times like when you work when you work in the world of art and entertainment there's a lot of money involved like right. even setting up a podcast having the money to get all the equipment like a lot of people just don't have access because of lack of money or poverty or whatever the case may be and i think at minimum what i can do is if like if i have the means to be able to like create a platform the least I could do is give them a space to like, you know, represent themselves, advocate for themselves, speak up for themselves, share their stories, you know, and what they need and, you know, where they're going, what they want to do, um, what they've done, what resources they have to help other people. Um, and so that's what I really want to do, like with my platform, ultimately. Um, I also want to try to get to the point where I can offer some classes, like actual classes for different things that are um, film related. Um, Like, especially when it, because for me, like as a black woman in film, I didn't even, I didn't know what a film producer did to even Mm. know like this is a potential job you could do. Like there are so many jobs in the world and so many ways to make money that like literally we're just ignorant to, we're not aware of, but when you, in male dominated industries and spaces like it's easy for a guy to be like oh let me bring my homeboy on set to pa or let you know what i'm saying like what or like he can he can move some stuff around and like you know like and even when i've there's been times i've hired pas or said like yeah i hired this person and it's a a woman and they're like well we're gonna need equipment moved around so like are they gonna be able to do that and i'm like is it like over a hundred pounds or like, right, right. because a lot of PAs that I work with that are women or young women, um, 
they be trying to do everything by themselves. Like, I be like, we somebody can help you. Like, they're overachievers. And I feel like it's kind of, you know, like, I have to make sure that there's space for them. Because what if I need a production assistant and it's more focused on, like, administrative work and, like, documents or something? Like, should I, should I hire a woman? Because... I'm biased to think that, like, she's more adept to handling those type of tasks than a, a male. Like, they both deserve the same opportunity. It's just about, you know, creating space for them to both have opportunities to be in, really do what, like, PA, you do whatever you need to do. So it's really beneficial to be in both situations for both genders if you're going to do this role or both, you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter. It's just can you do the job or not? Like, mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Um, so Wait, yeah, that's really important. Is that not a fair question to ask if somebody can lift on a certain amount though? I mean, because as a PA, whether it's of, a guy or a girl though, like if somebody, yeah, like part of the job I feel like is you should you need know to, if you got to do heavy lifting before. I mean, that's no. something I would tell <clears throat> like um, the the person that we're hiring is going to be like a main component as a part of this. Because I know I see that on job hired, applications period. sometimes. Yeah, like, you'll absolutely. see that on applications like, but can also, you lift over fifty pounds? Or absolutely, something? but it doesn't discriminate from any particular like gender from applying to the job based on the fact that something has to be lifted up in order to do the job you it's more about communicating like this PA job is going to require this this is what we're doing are you available and do you want to take the job and they can say yes or no like and most of the time my women PAs they're gonna say yes regardless like I'll be like we have a lot of they'd be like that's fine like, I have a truck, do you know, like, do we need to, it's never, it's never, it's more like, as a PA, there are a long list of general duties that you're responsible for. Just like, like you say, any other job listing. This is the scope of work. Either you can do the job or you can't. But like, typically as a PA, you're not typically going to be required to do anything that's so strenuous that like, an average person can't do like it's not that type of work like if we're moving equipment that is that heavy or something that is that significant number one it wouldn't be something that just one person is doing by themselves period like other people of the team are going to be a part of doing that and or like we're going to have a system or a process to like move this equipment around or whatever it's never going to be really that type of situation anyway where that sh bias should even be a factor so um you know definitely creating more spaces, um, you know, in these industries for women who are not even aware that these are possibilities for them as creatives um, and that there's jobs for them in positions where you can lead and, you know, like, you know, bring your ideas to life. And there are people that will, you know, work with you. And I'm lucky I work with a lot of men who really respect me. Right. Um, they respect me as a leader. They're willing to take my direction. And, you know, they also, but they also, we also like protect each other. Like we also make sure that like everybody feels comfortable and safe on set. Um, you know, there's, it, and, and we like, we bid on each other all the time. Right, like it's funny, right. like a director I work with who served as a assistant director on the shoot I did today was like, yeah, you're always talking shit about me to my face, but when I'm not around, you're always like telling people the best things about me because it gives back <laughs> to him sometimes, right. I guess. But yeah, and I'm like, because it's true. Because right. like, you're we, like my brother. Right. Like, it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all have a mutual respect for each other. We can like joke around and play around. It's never like, nobody's demeaning or calling anybody stupid or an idiot or like, you know, like, yeah, we like make fun of each other, but it's never in a, you know, bad intention way. Like Lovely. I've seen people who have had moments and then have, you know what I'm saying? Been like, I apologize for, you know what I'm saying? Having a moment. I was frustrated. I'm sorry for saying this to this person. Like I'm lucky that, you know, most of the people I work with are pretty mature and I work with like a lot of men who have, um, you know, created space for myself and the women that I brought into the space um, on the production side. And I really think that, you know, we have to continue to like amplify that mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's like, you know, when you are in the space where, you know, you're the minority or you're trying to get in, you, you can fight and fight and fight and fight and, and do all you can. But as long as these people are still shutting you out, it's going to take much longer or, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be such a much harder fight than these people 
actually, you know what I'm saying, saying, okay, maybe we need to make some changes and maybe we need to make some progress here. And you know what I'm saying? It's just like, like, I don't, and I don't want to be an extreme and say it's like oppression, but it's like when you're talking about oppression and the oppressors, the oppressors are the ones responsible for the oppression. Of course, the oppressed people are going to fight the oppressors because they, they're fighting to live and to survive, but the oppressors are still responsible for the oppression and correcting and stopping that oppression. So like at some point, like progress will be made a lot quicker if there are more men willing to create space for women, willing to put them in positions to lead and take direction from sure. them and not, you know what I'm saying, allowing the societal norms to make them feel like that that's somehow demeaning them or dis disrespecting them or making them less than because there's a woman that is like leading the team. Because in reality, this is a group project. But we all trying to get the same thing done. Mm -hmm. gotta play a part. Like, but that's why it's really important for me to always have like a very positive environment on set. Everybody is important. Like, I don't tolerate disrespect. Like, who, who, person picking up the trash, they are treated with respect by everybody. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, well, everybody's culture. important. Everybody has a role. Right. Like, everybody's a, a doing something to help make this happen. For I sure. just posted this quote from Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> the toes you step on today may be connected to the ass you have to kiss mm. tomorrow. <laughs> so it's better to be nice to people Samuel than L. to shit that. on them. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, because yeah, you yeah. never know what can happen in life. You never know how God is going to humble you and the universe is going to oh. about to sit you down and teach you a lesson because why are you projecting your nasty negative energy on somebody for no reason or whatever but like facts. because you feel like they're you know they're down here and you up here no that's real. no so that. that's a very important treated. part like Lost. of the like work environment so i have a lot more videos coming out music videos coming up um working on some <sighs> short films hopefully okay. i'm really excited okay i'm like trying to get more into the narrative yeah. space yeah um i'm also going to be doing a few more things in front of the camera hopefully um maybe getting into a little more acting um i'm just trying to oh. explore you act? Yeah. yeah i've done some acting yeah. nice i, I actually i actually had a friend of mine um who reached out to me about a potential role like later this year because i was like an extra on a short film that was shot uh, the last year, I believe, or the year before, I can't remember, but, um, I was like a regular extra, yeah. but they needed somebody to play a bartender cause they were going to be in this shot and they needed somebody in like black. I ended up having a black top on and my friend was like, Hey, give me the bartender. And I was mm -hmm. like, girl, I don't know. Like <laughs> I was nervous. Right, right. I wasn't expecting like, like y'all going to be on, on camera. Um, cause I, she was like, it was a favor. She was like, can you please come out? I was like, first of all, I got you, but I wasn't ready for all that. But, you know, it was like a little simple actions. I took their direction. You know, it came out really well. The movie was really cool. Um, but, yeah, they, like, hit her up and were, like, they were interested in giving me a lead role in a short film tough. because they took I took, like, really good direction. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. They think I would fit the role. So I'm, like, open to everything. Like, I don't put any limits on myself. I consider yeah. myself a limitless person. Anything that I really want to achieve or do that I put my mind to, I believe I can do it. So... You know, that's definitely one of the things that I'm interested in. Like, I would love to be, like, a comedy actress, low-key. Oh, yeah. Yeah, put that out there. I, I, I mean, like, yeah, love I, comedy. I was about like, to say, like, do, is acting something you're, like, into? Like, you want to yeah. be an actress? That. You know what I'm saying? That. Like, I, 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 it's I just, it's got to be the right kind of stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, I'm not one of those, like, I'm not trying to do anything to get up to the top. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't right. need to be you wanna anything act like shit. that. Like, I, yeah. I want to. Yeah, you like, like, you're not that. out here, like, forcing roles. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, forcing yourself I into a, 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 trying to get a role. No, but and I'm not like. If you see something, but you like the idea of acting. Oh, yeah. That's my absolutely. question. Like, you like, you like acting. I could have totally been on Insecure. Like, okay. right, I could have right. totally been so another like character. Okay. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? And I got, I got my own insecure stories, you know what I'm saying? Could have been its own episode. Yeah. Right. So I love, like, something like that. I, I feel like that's something that's more like, you know, it's right. acting, but it's so relatable. It would just be, like, easy and fun. And, of course, still, it would be a lot of work, but it would just be something that, Go like, you know, yeah, some right. acting roles, like, you really have to turn into a whole nother person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Is and, that, like, but you don't want to do that. You want to be, like, a person that you kind of already are. 
Yeah, that, like, I'm trying would, to get a sense of like I, how into I think, acting you are. So I wouldn't mind doing some characters that have like a different personality Ooh, than me. Yeah, yeah. I haven't. I will say like I'm open to going to doing roles that are maybe a little bit deeper beyond what my per, what my real personality is. But I haven't really like explored. Yeah, yeah. How right. deep I will be willing to go? Like I'm not trying to come home. And you still have to be get like an acting like, coach. Like, <laughs> right, right. Everybody, everybody, there, call like, me Shirley. Right, right. <laughs> like, no. everybody, it's, it's Mrs. President. No. <laughs> everybody, call me Mrs. And like, there are people who really be like kind of stuck in character and like nah, acting like they I have was listening, I was listening to something uh, Daniel Day Lewis when he was right. playing Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, everybody call him Mr. President. Like, right. oh my gosh. <laughs> but like he's just one example that I heard, I recently heard of. A lot of people do and shit like, like that. And like how long does it take before you like get into character yeah. and no, get out of character? Yeah, how long like, did like get like I mean, I feel like How yeah. long was people calling him Mr. President before I, I feel somebody like, was I feel like, like as soon as they rap We're not doing this no more. He's a grown ass man. As soon as he rap Oh, uh Dave Chappelle told a story in his last special about how when he met to Jim Carrey for the first time, Jim Carrey was playing, was like in the middle of shooting another movie playing somebody else and he had him call him that. Oh, like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I like, think I do remember so, that. The, you know, a lot of motherfuckers have done that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I feel like these are grown men. As soon as they rap, they go back to who they being. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how could you forget who you are? Yeah, like, because you know? people be not, really not, like some, immersed some, some in the role. Like, I can see, I can see it. Immersing. You know, you, I mean, even though you have the infamous Heath Ledger, I'm about to say we lost Heath Ledger to it. I, I, but yeah, that he was actually but, doing drugs. Know. Like that's what did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah for sure. You know, sure. <laughs> like if yeah. you're playing, but part to you know, me, part player, of acting is like faking and lying. You're like, yeah. and the better, the more you can convince yourself that something is real, the easier it is to convince other people and to lie. That's how like people who are really good liars can pass lie detector tests they can because be actors. they're they able to convince the lie. themselves yeah. that the lie is true. I feel so like you they, work so with their act- body remains in a certain state of stasis while they do it and they yeah. don't like have any reaction. They don't have that reaction of like, I'm it, telling a lie. You know what I'm saying? There's no shame or guilt yeah, associated yeah. with it that makes your body or the fear of like someone I'm gonna get found out. Cause you, you believe that to be true. So like these people, who are preparing for these roles for months they train they lose weight they cut their hair they change their appearance they talk a different way and you don't want to do, do all that, that for months and months and months and months to shoot like or you know like the movie for like maybe one month or a couple weeks and then it's over they're still like it's on i feel like they almost you don't think they go of, back into the i, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, like i'll go right back but to i feel like i mean we've seen people who are still in character after so i yeah. feel like in those cases it probably like it it's almost like they have to like it's like a transition or yeah, a progress yeah, yeah. because they've it's been a fade in that out. hole for you so fade long out. you still win it's yourself a phase out right. Right. like you've been convincing yourself for the past few months that you're this person doing this with this life yeah and now that like you've done the final execution of that person you're supposed to go back to being like this other person that's sup- supposed to be you yeah and i think that's where people like so you're saying they, you don't want to do that <laughs> you don't want to get that deep into i acting. mean i think that i'm solidified enough in myself to know who the fuck i am right so you don't got to turn into somebody to act just aware of that process like you're just conscious but of yeah the fact yeah that that's what, that yeah and out. i don't think i would want to do a role that requires me to like turn into like like I don't want yeah, to. I don't want to be like. I don't think I want to be like a slave on a slave movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, yes, my son. Uh, like, I, I it's don't a period wanna, piece. Uh, it's a period right. piece. Yes, and I really yeah. respect actors who do those movies. Yeah. They, you know, sometimes I really like have to take a break from watching like um, some of those heavy black joints. suffrage, right. yeah, yeah, suffering yeah, yeah. movies, right. yeah, facts. and black like, like tragedy and folks. like right. it's very. I I still haven't watched the When They See Us. Yeah, I still yeah. the, the Central joint. Park Five yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, because I, see, I, see. I just was like not did not want to be in a state of like extreme. I feel that melancholy, no, like, I f- and I, I like that. I be crying about stuff like that. Like it really, I'm very empathetic, and things that are connected to um, like slavery and are like, like the real, ancestry real that I have, like um, in terms of my like s- slaves in America um it's just very it's horrifying like the things that i learned as an adult that like you think you you think it's terrible like when you learn in school and then like you go to college and you go to hbcu and you're like oh it was real wild then you just like go on the internet and like with 
all these new ways for people to share information and social media and TikTok and Reddit and all the rabbit holes and stuff. And you find out that like, it's even worse than that. Right. Like I had no idea about like Belgium and the Congo when I learned about slavery in school. Like I didn't know that that was like more people died during more Africans died during that time than right. the Holocaust. Right. Like yeah. that's crazy that like, I didn't find that out till I was an adult. And like, what's also crazy is when you like, you know, you're on Netflix or you're on YouTube and you're watching documentaries about history and you find out that literally today in bakeries, they have like chocolates that are in the shape of like body parts that are literally like, that are literally like referencing to like the, the, the basically slave slavery of the congolese people to the belgian people because they would cut off like if they didn't meet a certain quota they right. would cut off their limbs and they would eat them no it's crazy so like there's still like <laughs> reminders in the bakeries today right, right, why like right, that's crazy it's crazy it's a cultural thing right. that's wild. why do you have like right. little chocolate hands and it's I'm like weak. Weird, you know, <laughs> weird. don't think about it <laughs> like so yeah it's just it's crazy when you get older and you find out about all that wild shit and how like the more that it's just like it's 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 horrifying like i can't i i, I like found out so much stuff about like being eaten and slaves being eaten and like Ugh. hair being used to stuff furniture and things right, like that like right. it like i'm like damn this is like a hundred times worse than i thought it was so then when you know that that's reality and you got all these like slave movies and all these shows and it's just like yeah, uh, like and not that I, I i'm never it's not like you can ever ignore it but when it comes to like entertainment yeah, i just yo, be like sometimes you want to watch kevin hart riding a cop car with ice cube i've been needing a break sometimes i've been needing a break sometimes because it's like it's overwhelming yeah it's overwhelming but at the same time like those are the really the the wild stories that like should be known and told because like by watering it down and you know not really letting people know how horrible it was it like lessens the accountability for the people who did this it's like That's true. you you know what i'm saying like That's true. you gotta acknowledge that this was like more than what you're trying that. to make it to be right. you know what i'm saying and right. that people deserve more than just to think that like this is what we started with like black people here in america like we we started with like slavery and then to find out that it's, it was that bad like this and i know it's more than that like right. and 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 in 2024 they're trying to literally erase the shit in school like they're trying to teach even less than what we were taught about slavery yeah, and trying to like uh, like low-key yeah. glorify yeah. like slaves learn valuable skills that help them advance in life as slaves and we <laughs> So this is real PR job this is real like in texas yeah. like that's like what the yeah. like the governor or whoever the fuck idiot was saying really mm -hmm. like and it's like that's what y'all about to teach black kids in school that's crazy but i digress that's why i didn't become a lawyer politics nah, that's why you did not yo, become a lawyer nah, this this is like the, I feel like the lawyers yo, coming out the lawyer's been suppressed it's disturbing it's yeah, yeah, like yeah, you know what i'm saying heavy. like i would have yeah. been so sad all the time yeah, i feel like yeah, I not saying yeah, that like, like you know degree, they you think don't yourself. deserve a fight but right, i just right. as a lawyer you gotta kind of detach yourself from some of these outcomes don't you and i just felt like mike ross's problem was yeah i felt like there was another way for me to help and it was going to be something that was probably going to be a little more helpful healthy for me personally as I was trying to like make change in my own way like oh, it yeah. just wasn't going to be the route of like becoming an attorney and that's cool that's yeah cool. That's like, cool. but now the route that you took was the path you know well chosen you know what I'm facts. saying it's really on the up and up let people know so you let us know what you got coming up down the pipeline let you know when they could tap in with you like if they're actually trying to follow up with you all your socials or whatnot okay so my main socials are on Instagram. It's the Amber Rain, and that's R A Y N E Rain. Um, and then also my um, business page, Amber Rain Media, and also call uh, follow Cool Kids Forever DMV. For sure. um, that's my production family. I produce majority of um, their projects, and I'm working a lot more with them with the events um i'm really proud of like this company and all that they've done and all the things that we're going to do so definitely check them out 
Um, the link in my bio on Instagram has like all of my links, uh, my website and stuff like that. So just go to my Instagram and check that out. Um, and yeah, and if you need, um, you know, if you want to connect with me on a business level, like please email me. Tap my email is also her. in my bio. Tap in. Um, so sure. yeah, please like let me know what you're trying to do and how I can help. And I'll see what, you know, I'll do whatever I can to like help. Solid. Solid Amber, appreciate, appreciate you coming you. on. So it's been me. very fun. No, no. It's this very is fun. like a really great conversation. No, yeah, for really sure, was, really for sure. Was. I know I'll be rapping y'all, but like, no, 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 no. Not even we, like, we, bro. You we, should hear us. The conversation <laughs> was talking about? so we, good. No, we yeah. rapping, and trust me, we really appreciate when people pull up to the stew and like and are comfortable with rapping. Yeah, like to be honest, like even when we tell people exactly like the concepts of conversation, like yo, if this shit go on, this shit go on, like you know what I'm saying, like. We we enjoy that, you know what I'm saying. We appreciate yeah. it. Well, so thank, thank you guys you. for having me. I appreciate much. you coming on. I'm so really that. honored that you guys yeah. have me come through. I really for appreciate sure. it. I love you guys. Studio is dope. Next thank time you. we pull up, we gotta be you know after the short film. You know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, yeah. facts. So to, you know for the promo run, run for the press run. Like <laughs> I'll let you know how that goes. This gotta be one of the stops on the press run for sure. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, appreciate you. Till next time. Early.